Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us here this day. We pray that these words may be your words and that we may proclaim them to the world in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, as I said earlier, I am coming off a of vacation. A week ago this past Thursday, we drove down to Florida, and then on Friday, we embarked to the Bahamas, uh, a town called Bimini, or a little island called Bimini. And so we were on this, this cruise, and, um, or as I like to call it, a, a petri dish in the sea. <laughs> and um, so we got off the boat on, on Monday and then, and then came on back. It was a great time. We had a wonderful opportunity to... To, to be with family and friends, and that there were 12 of us in all. And so when we got back to the house, um, if you watched Word for Wednesday a couple weeks ago, I told you about my new hobby, which is glass etching. Well, our niece went with us, and she's headed off to uh, Virginia Tech to college in, in a few weeks. And so her birthday was Thursday, so I was making her a Virginia Tech glass. And so when I was doing that, I'm always very careful to wear a mask, when I, when I etch, because you know all the glass dust and stuff, I'm sure that's probably not good for you, but I forgot to put on a mask at the beginning of that. About 10, 15 minutes in, I, I realized I put it on, but later that evening, I started coughing, and I got worried that, you know, maybe I had inhaled some of this glass dust, and the more I coughed, the, the more worried I got, and I was coughing that night, and, you know, then the next day, um, you know, we, we drove my niece to to meet my brother in Rock Hill, and, and, and I was still coughing. I, I went to the gym that afternoon, even though I was coughing, you know. I was like, I really hope, I don't want to go to the doctor and be like, yeah, I think I sucked up a, a mirror, um, you know. And, and, but then later on Tuesday evening, it, I started getting stopped up in the head, and I was like, well, good. At least it's not glass. And then in the middle of the night, when I coughed myself awake, I thought, you know, I remember another time when I felt like this, a couple times. One was a year ago in May, and the other one was in December 2020, huh? when I had COVID. So I got up in the middle of the night, about 2.30 a.m., and, and took a COVID test. It's negative, no problem. Went back to bed uh, and, and got up the next morning, feeling even worse, laid around, and then I spiked a fever. And I thought, huh, maybe now I should take a test. Sure enough, it was positive. COVID, again. I mean, I didn't even think COVID was a thing anymore, you know? I, I heard a few weeks ago that Abercrombie's had it, but other than that, I mean, when's the last time you heard, heard about somebody having this thing? I mean, you know, they don't care about it. Nobody's tracking it anymore. Um, you know, if you see people wearing masks, it's kind of rare these days. I mean, I didn't think much of it. You know, last time we got on a cruise, we had to go through all of these protocols for COVID. And this time, no, nothing. You know, you just get on the boat. And make, they make sure that you were born here and stuff, and you go ahead. But here I am, living proof that it still exists. And it's just as fun as it was the first two times, I can assure you. And, and, and as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, this thing started out as, with one guy. One guy in a lab somewhere I, in China, I guess. Um, and he got it. And then they started tracking it because this is new illness. And so on December the 30th in 2019, there were three confirmed cases of COVID. Three. On January the 27th, 2020... A little less than a month later, there were 14,430 cases. Now, this is from the World Health Organization. This isn't, this, the, these are our numbers. And then a year later, well, less than a year later, on January the 4th, 2021, 89,567,838 confirmed cases of COVID. Four of those were my family. Now, one guy. In a year, it went from one guy to 89 million people. That's kind of impressive, isn't it? I mean, impressive probably isn't the right word, but it's very awing. I mean, one guy to 89 million. That's incredible. 
I mean, you know, it's, it, it's unheard of. Nobody would have ever thought that one guy, 89 million, it's crazy. So what does this have to do with today's gospel reading? Well, I kind of think that if Jesus was telling a parable today, he might just say the kingdom of heaven is like COVID-19. <laughs> I mean, that seems kind of weird, right? Because he said it's a mustard seed. Mustard's not a bad thing. Some people don't like it on their hot dogs, but you know, it's not a bad thing. And, and yeast, who doesn't like bread, right? Or beer. <laughs> Got to have yeast for beer too. But here's the thing. In ancient Israel, the mustard seed and the mustard bush, it was a weed. It wasn't wanted. And it grew everywhere. So, I mean, they didn't have lawn mowers back then. Can you imagine all of a sudden coming out and you, you know, oh great, a mustard seed in my front yard. Now I've got a 10 foot bush covering my house. I mean, who would want that? But that's what mustard seeds were. I mean, there were these tiny little seeds. They were weeds, unwanted plants everywhere. And then yeast, well, you may remember that the Jews aren't big on leavened bread. They like the unleavened bread, the kind without yeast. So for them, yeast was considered a contaminant in dough. So what Jesus is comparing the kingdom of heaven to was a weed, an uncontrollable weed, or a contaminant. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Well, first of all, there's something you need to understand. In Matthew's gospel, when he talks about the kingdom of heaven, he is not talking about the place where people go when they die. He is not talking about, you know, the place with harps and angels and clouds and, you know, streets of gold. That's not what he's referring to. In Matthew's gospel, for him, the kingdom of heaven was on earth, here and now. As you know, when, when Jesus came, he said, the kingdom of heaven has come near, i.e. him. So the kingdom of heaven in Matthew's gospel refers to God's established reign right here. And so, which makes a little more sense because you're like, well, so heaven is like a mustard seed that grows and grows and grows. No. God's reign on earth is like a mustard seed that grows and grows and grows. God's reign on earth is, is like that yeast. And a little makes it grow and grow and grow. God, the kingdom of heaven on earth is like COVID-19. This microscopic thing we can't even see that changed the entire face of the world. That's the kingdom of heaven. Something you can't even see that has such a huge impact that it changes everything. Makes sense now, doesn't it? But why would Jesus talk about something unwanted in comparison to the kingdom of heaven? Don't we want heaven? Yeah, kind of. But do we really? Here's the thing. If you look over the history of the world and, and even into the present about when Christianity spread the most in, in certain places... It was always, it spread the, the quickest and still does in the, and, and the most impressively in places that are hurting. Where there is war, where there is famine, where there is oppression. Among those people is where the faith spreads the most. Where it doesn't spread as much, where people are comfortable. So over in, in places in Africa right now, that's the fast, fastest growing places of Christianity. Why? Because over here, we're nice and comfy cozy. Because the change that, that comes about when that seed is planted, when that yeast is, is, is scattered in, well, do we really want that weed in our lives? Do we want that leaven in our dough? 
because it changes us. It impacts our lives. It impacts the people around us. But here's the thing about the kingdom of heaven. It's also so very precious and so very wonderful that upon finding it, it's like a treasure in a field. And a guy goes and sells everything he has. And he doesn't just buy the treasure. He buys the whole field. Or, or someone uh, who's in search of precious pearls. And he finds this one. And so he sells everything for this one pearl. Because that's how amazing it is. That, my friends, is the kingdom of heaven. It's so amazing that it can't help but grow. But here's the thing. Just as I've said the kingdom of heaven is like COVID, we kind of treat it that way sometimes here, don't we? Because what we do, we, we have been planted with this seed at our baptism. That yeast has been sprinkled upon us like the waters that were sprinkled on our head. And yet, we put on a mask to keep it contained. We hide behind this mask of faith. And because we don't want people to really know the change that, that it causes in us. So we try to act like everybody else. We try to fit in with everybody else. Not acting like the people of God that we are. And we certainly don't want to share this kingdom with anybody, right? So we maintain our distance. We socially distance ourselves from other people. We keep these masks on so they can't see the real us. The faith that's inside. The precious pearl that, that we contain. Dear friends, it's time to take that mask off. It's time to show people the faith that we have. Share our gifts to show God's love. That's how we say it here. And as we share our gifts, as we show that love to the world, then one by one, person by person, that, in, that infectious faith spreads and grows and grows. Because we may not be in a, in a hurting country, but I promise you there are people in pain around us. There are people that need some good news today. They need to hear about that precious pearl that somebody loves them that somebody saves them, that no matter what they've done or no matter how far they've gone, that there's a love that nothing can separate them from. That is the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is what is being established and continues to be established and grow and grow and grow. But we got to take off our masks. we got to share that faith with the world, my friends, through our deeds, through our words, let them see what's behind the mask. The joy, the love, the grace from a God who loves us, who saves us, who gave his life for us. Amen.